So hello, everybody. Again, I'm Cindy Chickalese. I now work for the Wikimedia Foundation um, as the product manager for the MediaWiki platform team. And I'm very excited to be in that position. And I'm going to talk a little bit. Um, my talk is called Towards a MediaWiki Roadmap. It's not called a MediaWiki Roadmap because I'm working towards creating a MediaWiki Roadmap. And maybe that'll make a little more sense as we go through my talk. Um, so I'll start a little bit with some historical perspective. As I said um, before, I worked at the MITRE Corporation um, for 10 years-ish prior to um, joining the Wikimedia Foundation. And in my role at the, at the MITRE Corporation, I created wikis for our government customers. And um, one thing that I got asked several times as we were proposing MediaWiki as a solution to their knowledge management needs was, um, but this MediaWiki thing, is it going to be there in five years? You know, is it going to still meet our needs? Is it still going to run on the platform that we need in five years? Um, these extensions that you're creating for us to MediaWiki to do things that are, you know, allowing us to visualize our data are those going to be still there in, in five years? And, and the extension question was a, an easy enough one to answer because it, that prompted us actually to start open sourcing our extensions to make them available. So that even if we MITRE were no longer involved in helping folks to maintain their wikis and um, grow them, this code, the extension code to MediaWiki that we created would be out there in the ecosystem and other people could maintain it. And I don't know why it's doing this. Um, oh, wait, that went ahead. Stop. Um, so the, the extensions would still be available. Um, and they could, they could edit them. They could, they could maintain the code. They could hire other contractors to do so. But the base MediaWiki platform, um, I, I kept on saying, you know, the Wikimedia Foundation, you know, I, I need somebody out there to tell me that MediaWiki as a product, as a, as a piece of software, will still be there. And as open source software, of course, we know that um, it will be, right? Because you can always, well, I won't say the fork word. But you, know, you, know, you always know that you, can, you have access to the source code, source code and you, you want it. But you'd like to know that this, this wonderful, diverse um, community of, of software developers will continue to be working on this product and that they won't suddenly say, oh, well, you know, you know, hey, you know, this PHP thing was fun, um, but I want to now run on the grapefruit operating system using the uh, Pimento web browser or web server, you know, it, it, it's something that's completely, you know, so as a, so me, in 2008 to 2016 was saying, we need a roadmap. And I, I still agree that, you know, this is still me, but it's me in the past. Yay, we still, we need a roadmap. We need to know what, lay out what the future of MediaWiki is. So I was really excited in 2017 to see that the Wikimedia Foundation was hiring a product manager for the MediaWiki platform and saying things like this person should be responsible for the, we, the roadmap for MediaWiki. That's excellent. That's, that, yeah, I want to do that because I think that that roadmap is so important that I want to be that person that goes and does that. And oddly enough, they decided to hire me, even though I was one of those third party community people. And I now work at the, the Wikimedia Foundation and that, that roadmap thing I wanted for all those years is my job. And wow. Roadmaps are complicated. <laughs> so me in 2017, I'm trying to pull together all those pieces and create a roadmap. And, um, and this is very much a work in progress. And so this talk is toward a media, media, media wiki roadmap. I will talk a little bit about what I, the information that I'm gathering, why this is a hard process, and what it is I hope to achieve in terms of a media wiki roadmap. And I would love to have all of your input also from your perspective on what would be a useful, what would be useful information to have in a roadmap and what form that roadmap could take that would be useful to you. 
So what are some of the things that make creating a roadmap for MediaWiki in, in particular difficult? Um, you know, there, and I'll talk a little bit about what we're doing in the, in the future and what we've got in progress, but the MediaWiki architecture, um, in some place, you know, you could say, hey, you know, LAMP stack, pretty, pretty straightforward. But when you talk about all of the components, the pieces, you know, how do, um, how would an extension, if you were to create an extension, reach into the core code and change any given thing? Well, there's this great hook architecture, and it is documented, but it can be sort of difficult for folks to visualize the entire thing. There, um, so so it, it's, it is quite a powerful architecture that's not completely documented um, and is a big moving target, and, um, and it's continuing to change, which is great. It's changing in great ways, but it makes um, creating the roadmap a little bit more of a challenge. Uh, what are the boundaries of MediaWiki? You know, what, what do we really, when we're talking about the MediaWiki platform, is, and when all of you are talking about using MediaWiki, and you as third-party users probably see a different boundary than folks that are using MediaWiki to support Wikipedia at the Wikimedia Foundation. What actually is part of MediaWiki? Is it the extensions? Or, you know, are they part of the core MediaWiki? If so, which ones? Um, you know, the configuration, how to set up a wiki farm, that was a big one for me. Because I came up with a whole way, you know, scripts and a whole architecture of what the files and directories, you know, and I hated symbolic links, so I did it without any symbolic links. Some people do it with lots of symbolic links. Is that part of MediaWiki? Is that structure? Should it be part of MediaWiki? You know, I think that there should be a better defined way of specifying we, wiki farms that everybody, because constantly, and I think just yesterday, didn't somebody just post a question yesterday about wiki farms on, on one of the mailing lists? Um, you know, what is, a, what is a wiki farm? How, how do you define it? it? There is no reason that sh there shouldn't be a standard way to set up wiki farms. So, uh, but, but are those, is, is media wiki a wiki or is it a farm of wikis? Does it matter? It, uh, what part of the configuration really is, um, is considered media wiki itself? Yeah, what parts are core? What are optional components to support? And should there be, should there be several predefined profiles maybe? You know, the Wikimedia, Wikimedia Foundation, you know, they, for Wikipedia and its sister wikis, have a very well-defined way of, of um, maintaining their configuration that works great for wikis of that scale, um, but typically it's not that useful in an enterprise setting. Should there be another profile that people can replicate for an enterprise setting? Um, what about, you know, hobbyists or, you know, I heard somebody say something earlier about how they'd like to set up a wiki to manage their own stuff. You know, um, I, I think, you know, so is that another profile for a single standalone wiki that somebody uses as their secondary brain um, to hold their, their memories, their, their thoughts? Um, who's responsible for which pieces of media wiki? Um, and that's a common one, and that's one that the foundation is working on. You know, if you find a bug in something, um, sometimes it's obvious who's responsible for that bit of code, but quite obvious, quite often it's not. And so, you know, having a good, um, you know, and, and some of the code is, is, is maintained by the foundation, some is not. Um, so it may not even be the Wikimedia Foundation that's responsible for a particular piece of code. Um, and so finding out, and certainly if you're using an extension, is, it a, is the extension maintained? Is somebody going to respond if you ask a question? So, um, so all of these things are, are, um, are complicating. And then, you know, finally, who decides the future? You know, if, if I were to stand, you know, put a stake in the sand and say, okay, I'm going to by myself create a roadmap for MediaWiki. Well, there's a lot of stakeholders, in your stakeholders in this. The Wikimedia Foundation, um, they've certainly got lots of stakeholders of lots of different shapes and colors. You know, so there are a lot of people who care about the future of MediaWiki, and so, in, and so I guess that sort of, you know, every time I try to define the roadmap, I wanna make sure that I'm not excluding some viewpoint. So at some point, one needs to put a stake in the sand and say, this is the roadmap. But um, in a way where um, 
these different perspectives are ref reflected and supported. So I'm going to do. I'm going to talk a little bit more. You know, I talked a little bit about um, the um, present, and I'll talk a little bit more about you know, so where we are right now, and I'm going to reach into the past about how we got there, and then I'll talk a little bit. So okay, it's not, we're not not the normal order of things, but let's talk about where, where we are now and then I'll talk about how we got there. Um, so some current work that's going on in the MediaWiki platform, um, there's a project, how many people here have heard of multi-content revisions? Uh, maybe a quarter, quarter of the people here. So uh, yeah, there's some people know it very well. So um, I'd say the most active um, project right now as far as changing the core MediaWiki code is something that's called multi-content revisions and it is a project that aims to for each page um, currently you've got wiki text which is your or well there can be different um, also different content handlers for different types of pages and different namespaces but Typically, like in the main namespace, your content pages will have wiki text as their format. Multi-content revisions aims to allow you to have multiple slots for each page for a given revision, and different kinds of content can be stored in those different slots. Um, so you may have a main slot that is wiki text, but then have many additional, or so, more than one additional slot that has data, perhaps stored in a JSON format that's additional structured data associated with that. Um, the project, the primary driver behind the current implementation of, of multi-content revisions is a project called Structured Data on Commons that aims to allow for Wikimedia Commons, which is a wiki that hosts imagery and video files um, that are all um, part of the commons. And there is data associated, you know, there's EXIF data associated with um, images, and that data is not easily um, queryable in its current format um, in the commons. The idea would be to take that data and make it, using this multi-content revisions, have that data um, available in slots associated with it. So multi-content revisions in its current form is first addressing the storage layer of how to store that additional structured data associated with, um, with pages in the wiki. And then future um, work on multi-content revisions will then um, address, well, how would you edit these different um, slots associated with a single page in the wiki. So this, what's, what's going on right now is that first um, step, and that involves some changes to the core MediaWiki code and the, core, the schema of storage of revisions within a wiki. And um, the, the schema change to support multi-content revisions will be um, introduced, will be included in MediaWiki 1.31, which will be released this summer. Um, and so again, that's the first phase of multi-content revisions. And I mention that in part for you guys to think about, okay, so now that this ability to have multiple slots associated with a page in a wiki exists, what might be something that you might want to do with this capability? And I can think of a lot of things and I'd be happy to talk to you all later about that. But, um, but you sort of to, to think about, okay, so now, We've got this additional capability in core that may be useful if you want to do other things with structured data associated with a page in the wiki. Okay, so that was the, the present, real brief. Um, and, and now I'm going to talk a little bit about the past and how we got here. And I have to say, Corey Floyd, who is um, an engineering manager in audiences at the Wikimedia Foundation, um, created the next two slides talking about the evolution of MediaWiki core. And um, so I thank him and credit him with these um, very helpful slides that lead to a current program called the Platform Evolution Program that we hope to work on in the coming year. So before mobile, 
2001 to 2011. Um, this should look pretty familiar to you all as far as a high level architecture for MediaWiki. MediaWiki has the core code. It has a parser in it that knows how to parse wiki text. Um, it has skins, templates, extensions, gadgets, okay? Really sort of a basic, very easy to understand and comprehend, uh, comprehend architecture. Um, and then um, people started wanting to be able to view wikis on a mobile platform in a way that took advantage of the form factor and um, the fact that a mobile device is different, has different characteristics than a um, desktop browser. And so an extension called Mobile Front End was created and it was used as a way to allow folks not to have, um, this was another entry point into the MediaWiki back end that would display nicely on a mobile platform, um, but not custom um, code, not, not native code for, for the different types of devices. Um, then um, there was this great thing. Everybody wanted to have visual editor. They wanted to be able to edit a wiki page and have it look not have this um, transition back and forth between this, this back end wiki text format and the f nice front end. You wanted to be able to have WYSIWYG editing. And so um, in order to support this visual editor extension, uh, a service called Parsoid was created that runs on top of a, um, a back end called RESTBASE that allowed partially parsed information to be saved to allow very quick, the quick context switching back and forth between um, the edit view and the reading view of a page. And so this architecture started to evolve and you can see that a little bit more complexity is coming into, but now we have this parser down here which is the Wikitext parser and this Parsoid service also. And um, how many folks here have installed Visual Editor? Cool, lots of you, that's awesome. How many of you all have installed it on top of RESTBASE and got RESTBASE up and working as well? Really? Oh, come on, Hold, hang, those, uh, put those hands up high. Well, people are, you know, they tried, maybe sort of. Yeah, yeah, yeah Gergo doesn't count, he works for the foundation. <laughs> okay, anybody who didn't work, doesn't work for the foundation that's actually gotten RESTBASE installed and working correctly? Just about everybody put their hands up for visual editor. That's interesting. And nobody up for rest. So it's, it's sort of hard to install. I tried to. Um, oh, I should have put my hand up for visual editor and not for rest base. Um, yeah, a lot of us tried. It, it's, it's a little bit complicated. It works super great. It is, it is what was definitely needed for Wikipedia to be able to edit it in context switch quickly. The folks that wrote it, they know how to install it, and it is amazing. Um, but it's a little bit um, difficult for those of us in the third party community. Um, that, I guess I was wearing my 2016 hat then, um, to install. So, um, but, but it's great, but it adds a bit of complexity to the architecture. Um, and then there's this mobile content service that was added also to interact with mobile front end, and you've got your um, iOS apps and Android. So things get, as you start adding more capabilities, more features to the platform, the architecture, sort of evolved in this way that, you know, <laughs> MediaWiki is great and it does amazing things and Wikipedia is awesome, but it keeps, it, it sort of evolved and got a little bit, you know, an extra arm over here, an extra hand over there or whatever, and it's, you know, got a little bit, a little bit unwieldy. Like an octopus. Like an octopus. <laughs> exactly like an octopus. <laughs> and then there's all this other stuff. Um, yeah, they're, they're, yeah. It, it's, it's definitely an octopus. It's really super smart and awesome with lots of appendages, but a little bit hard to manage. Um, so again, this thanks to Corey. Um, he coined the term just-in-time architecture. The architecture for the current MediaWiki was not so much designed, but it emerged. And, and it emerged, it, it's fabulous, but maybe it's time for us to sit back and, and revisit it and maybe clean off some of those um, rough edges. Um, it's got some fragment, fragmentation. There's a maintenance burden that has been um, 
incurred by the, by the evolution. Developer impedance, you know, it's difficult for the develop developers to figure out what all the diff you know, how to interact with the code and to wrap their mind around, their brain around the, the um, architecture as it exists now. Um, a lot of technical debt has, has, has accumulated and the documentation just isn't that good right now. There are parts of MediaWiki documentation that are amazing. There are parts of, of it that are very well maintained. There are also cases where the same thing is documented in multiple different places in multiple different ways, some of which are accurate and some of which not so much. So there needs to be some focus on the documentation. Sure, where's the um, mic? James. <laughs> you have one job. <laughs> so, so the question is, uh, do you have a roadmap for documentation? Yeah, I'll talk about that. Okay, great. Absolutely. So digging ourselves out of a hole, again, thank you to Corey. Um, so back late last year and really, um, uh, you know, becoming concrete in December was this thing called the Audiences Technology Working Group. So that's an interesting name. It makes a whole lot of stuff to folks, sense to folks in the foundation, maybe not so much to people outside. Audience, so the Wikimedia Foundation, two of the primary places where developers sit are a, a department called Audiences, which is used to be called Product, I think, or something with product in the name, that's really, you know, sort of product facing, and then technology, which is more infrastructure and um, services, and that's where um, the MediaWiki platform team lives. So there were a lot of folks who were forward user facing, um, you know, concerned with features, concerned with things like the mobile apps, who lived in audiences, who wanted to have a simplification of this architecture, and then folks who are in technology as well, who are maintaining a lot of this infrastructure core code, that both sides had opinions about the need for there to be a simplification of the architecture, perhaps different opinions about the way the evolution of this should, should go. So the audiences department and the technology department formed a combined working group, and I thanked Corey Floyd a little bit earlier for those slides. He stepped forward to actually lead this working group. Um, he's in audiences. I'm in technology and I was working with him on part of the steering group for this working group. Um, starting in December, 18 folks um, from audiences, from technology and Wikimedia Deutschland. Um, Daniel Kinsler, who's there, has been very actively involved. He's also um, uh, the lead of TechCom, which is um, a group that um, has oversight to large architectural changes within um, the MediaWiki platform. And um, so Daniel Kinsler is very involved from Wikimedia Deutschland. Um, we had folks contribute what they thought the main issues were with the current MediaWiki platform and ecosystem. and. Um, we collected 83 issues. We didn't initially, you know, deduplicate them or, um, you know, try to um, make sure that they had complete coverage of all the landscape of all of the possible issues that exist. But through a, you know, people identified what they thought were the most important 83 things to them. Um, and then we try, went through a little bit of a sort of a decomposition of them on <laughs> through with 28 dimensions, 28 different types of things that we tried to sort of categorize them for, for us to be as a working group to sort of wrap our minds about what we thought that the most important things that we needed to address as we evolve the platform are. And um, as we were going through this process, we were all get, so getting ready as a foundation to go through our annual planning process. And um, with the support of um, the uh, CTO, the head of the technology department, Victoria Coleman, and um, the head of the audiences um, department, um, Toby Negrin, together, um, we decided to um, create a cross-departmental program for the annual plan um, that also includes community engagement. Am I getting that right? 
the Community Engagement Department, um, which is a third department that also has input in, you know, the interactions with the community. Um, and so we came up with this thing called the Platform Evolution Cross-Departmental Program, or CDP, that will help, um, that will take the platform forward. Um, so just, you know, how we got to where we are. Um, Victoria will talk on Friday morning a little bit about the Wikimedia strategy process. Um, the, the, we have gone through the last year through a process of trying to come up with a strategy for the Wikimedia movement um, to say where we will be in the year 2030. And that movement came up with a few key um, goals um, supporting knowledge as a service, supporting knowledge equity, um, and those are guiding principles towards the year 2030 for the Wikimedia movement. And from those principles, um, those also helped guide um, what we wanted to support in a software platform for the Wikimedia movement. Um, in addition, you know, b going into this, there were these position papers that were written by the audiences department and the technology department saying what they thought the issues were and how we should go forward. And then um, every year the Wikimedia Foundation has a developer summit. And so we had in San Francisco a developer summit in January. And so there were working meetings at the dev summit that also helped to inform the audience's technology working group, which created the platform evolution cross-departmental program. And that program going forward will work on the evolution of the MediaWiki platform with the advice of TechCom. So to give you a brief view, um, so whenever I try and, you know, characterize a problem, solve a problem, um, I always think, you know, what's the best tool for this? What's the, what's the best tool to, to, you know, store all this knowledge and all these pieces of information that I'm accumulating to, in the course of trying to do my job? And of course, the answer is always a wiki, <laughs> right? So I created a wiki. In fact, I created a wiki farm, wikifarm.wmflabs.org. Um, and maybe over the course of the next couple of days, I'll show you a couple of the other wikis that I've put on there. I use it for doing project management for the projects that I'm currently trying to track within the foundation. Um, I have another wiki farm called cindy.wmflabs.org that I have, that's, that's my little playground and I created a wiki on there called notes. That's my little engineering notebook that whenever there's stuff that I just want, oh, so he's going to go look for it now. <laughs> So I created a notes wiki there that I, you know, I just sort of jot things down because I can't remember anything anymore, right, unless it's in a wiki. So I create these little wikis that have different aspects of the things I'm trying to work. So, so I created a platform evolution wiki. Here it is. Um, these diagrams are generated using Mermaid, the Mermaid extension from Lua. And inside of Lua, I do some semantic queries. This, this got demo generated when I brought that page up. It queried the semantic wiki, and it built that, which I think is pretty cool. Um, I can click on these things. So the, the main goal at a five-year, we, you know, we, we did a three to five-year plan for this cross-departmental program because the things that we're talking about doing, it, they, they're not going to happen quickly, right? You know, it's not going to be tomorrow we're going to have this thing done. So we've got a one-year plan that's our, that we proposed in the annual plan, but also a three to five-year, uh, we started looking from the higher level, three to five-year plan. So our overall goal is to empower the Wikimedia Foundation to accomplish its goals of Knowledge equity and knowledge as a service. Remember I said that this Wikimedia strategy process for 2030, those are two of the key goals. By evolving and investing in our technology stack to improve its flexibility, maintainability, and sustainability. So this all goes towards having a roadmap. This is sort of a high level, 30,000 foot view of what our roadmap is. Um, 
And there were three main thrusts in the three to five year goal. Um, outcome one, allow um, engineers more easily to scale, maintain and test Wikimedia projects. With, so it's basically all about architecture, okay? Um, first of all, figuring out what the architecture is now, <laughs> documenting that, and then planning how to evolve that towards the architecture that we want to have, okay? Simplifying that stuff in when I was, that last picture from the past of, you know, where we are now with Parsoid over here, we've got two parsers, we've got, you know, so simplifying that stuff, coming up with the architecture of the future. Um, outcome number two, across all languages, you know, that's one of the great powers of, of MediaWiki, right, is its ability to support multiple languages. Um, accessibility and usability spectrums can access the functionality of Wikimedia projects across more interfaces, devices, and form factors. You know, the future, of course, is, you know, handheld mobile devices. Um, sure, people will still use um, laptops, desktops, form factors, but, um, but to see how much of the functionality of MediaWiki can be accessed, the ability to edit on the fly on a mobile device, for example. Um, so being able to have that capability across a range of different types of advice, devices. And then number three, engineers are more effectively onboarded using new improved documentation that is clear, complete, and cohesive. Yes, and um, we are talking about um, stepping back and looking at what we can do to have a, a comprehensive documentation portal and to have that documentation. Um, th there are multiple aspects of MediaWiki that need to be documented. Certainly, you know, you know, front end aspect, you know, how to set it up, server, back end, you know, deployment of the MediaWiki platform, APIs, what's the API interface so somebody could query from a, from a remote platform, um, it, what is the architecture, um, looking at it from a high level detail, coding standards, how would somebody, if somebody wanted to develop an extension, what are the entry points, the, the interfaces for that? Um, so there are a lot of different aspects, tools. There are a lot of folks who have written, even like, so for Wikipedia, there are a lot of people who have written tools that can mine information from Wikipedia and, the other, and its sister wikis, sister projects. And so, it, but folks have also written backend tools to, to scrape, to, to query data from their third party wikis as well. And many of those tools can be useful for different people. So having a portal where folks can, just like we on MediaWiki.org, you can see all of the extensions to MediaWiki. Um, there's also work on a comprehensive tool catalog for tools that can um, interface with MediaWiki. Did I cover all of the documentation things that you were thinking that are missing? Uh, well, I, um, do you have the microphone still? I think it's turned off. No? Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, that's good. I was looking at some of the separation of the documentation for the intended audience. Mm -hmm, yes. And, and one of the things that we that that we need to do is to is to look at the above the platform documentation for wiki text, and, mm -hmm. and exactly have that oriented for the people that are going to build the application. Then you've got platform engineering documentation that's a totally different different sort of uh, uh, area. Absolutely. Uh, and I'm hoping that we'll, we'll get some sort of ontology for documentation. Yeah. That, that could start, start the, 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 the structural process for it. And I, I'd, I'd be happy to collaborate with- Oh, excellent, with, thank with, you. With, with anybody that, because that, that is, a, it's, it's a very serious issue. Yeah. Um, and, and to get the, that documentation aligned so we know what parser functions are, what we know. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And to make somebody who comes into this documentation portal have a way of, ver with as few clicks as possible, very quickly, be able to get to that segment of the documentation that's most relevant to what it is they're trying to find. And then to make sure, as I said, you know, right now there's a lot of duplic duplication. And make sure that somebody can very quickly find the one authoritative source to answer the question that they need. 
Microphone. as a service. Um, so the question was to understand the terms knowledge equity and knowledge as a service, and um, that may be discussed more um, by Victoria when she's talking about the strategy on Friday. But really briefly, knowledge as a service would be the ability to um, take the combined knowledge that's in a resource like, for example, Wikipedia, and to be able to use it and query it um, in multiple different ways. So that service, that, that, that repository of information would not only be a encyclopedia that one would walk up to and, and browse and search for within that resource, but you could then access it as a service in multiple different ways to create even greater and more powerful uses of that open knowledge. So that would be knowledge as a service. Knowledge equity would be making sure that there are no barriers to different people of different, um, different abilities to access the data, whether that be network constraints or language constraints or geographic or political constraints, that there be equity in the access to the knowledge that's contained in these repositories. So, um, okay, so that's the three to five year plan. The plan that we came up for next year is very similar. Um, <clears throat> and uh, so outcome one, engineers have clear understanding of the technology stack. So again, that's you know, the architecture being able to um, define where we are and how um, we plan to move forward with that. Um, and outcome number two, engineers are able to access more functionality using encapsulated components and well-defined APIs. So revisiting the APIs that are available and making sure that they are available in the ways that they need to be consumed. And the third, understanding the current architecture and coding standards and where to find them, and that's the documentation aspect. And, and just briefly, so you can see that I'm not making this up, um, if you click on any of those boxes, it'll take you to the um, drill down on, so this is the drill down on outcome one, and there are outputs associated with them, and each of those themselves are a page in the wiki. And so that top level view, as I said, is all queried. And so I, I really feel strongly about the use of wikis and their power and utility, and write something once and query it in many ways and display it in many ways. And I'm trying to evangelize that at every opportunity. <clears throat> so how do I get back to my presentation? Where did my presentation go? There we go. All right. So I talked about the three to five year outcomes. And just to simplify and summarize those, easy to scale, develop, maintain, and test all features, all platforms, all devices, all form factors, and document it all. Those are the high level three to five year goals. <clears throat> and in our first year, the goals are clear understanding of our stack and what the plan is to evolve it in the future. Um, starting to modularize selectively across the current code base. Obviously, we're not going to throw things out as they exist now and say, oh, we're just going to give you a completely different set of code that you're going to suddenly have to big bang get everything working with. No, things are going to evolve in place. Um, <clears throat> so selective modularization. <clears throat> That's not to say that the interfaces won't change, that folks, you know, folks will have to adapt as this grows, but the idea would be to give um, a well-defined path and, um, and good warning of, of how things will change in, in advance, and then a centralized documentation portal. Quick, quick question for sure. you. Uh, regression testing. Regression testing. What are you, look, what are you looking at in, in that? Because we have this issue of something comes out. Is, are all the, current, the, the present features supported, or has something broken? Or <laughs> Are we in a, an emergency situation to, to notify somebody? Yeah, so, um, well, I guess there's several different ways to answer that. 
Um, so certainly um, there are, <laughs> yeah, just have him hold onto the microphone. <laughs> um, testing, um, there, are, there is testing built in um, to the MediaWiki code and increasingly more testing with time. It is a goal. So um, the, the goal would be as there are changes introduced, making sure that um, things don't break or if they break, they break in a well-defined way and folks are, avail are aware of that. The, um, but also there is a plan in place for, and there is now and will continue to be a deprecation policy where things are, advan are um, announced in advance, advance if something is going to go away. He can hardly hold himself together. Um, give me one second and then I'll let you talk. Uh, yeah, so there's a deprecation policy. So you are aware in advance in multiple versions. And so you are aware when you upgrade, first things will become deprecated for a while before they eventually go away. And you are going to say. Um, so what is the communication policy for these uh, deprecation things? I appreciate that you, know, you, <coughs> you recognize the need for you know, no sudden changes. Um, but at the same time, if you've deprecated something and that's not communicated clearly to an end user, uh, <coughs> deprecation can look just like yanking, it, yanking the rug out. Yeah. So how, how, how are you going to communicate the deprecation to the users? Um, it's going to have to be communicated in multiple channels and we will Certainly for the third party community, if there are ways that will help to communicate that information better so that more mo people have access to that information, we are always open to that input and feedback. <laughs> but there are, well, everybody knows there's the media wiki lit mailing list. There are, um, you know, if there's something, a major architectural change, it's gonna go through an RFC process with TechCom and be announced. So there are, there are already existing channels in place if there are things that you feel that you're, <laughs> he, there's an answer he wanted. Yes, absolutely. We haven't mentioned the MediaWiki Stakeholders Group enough today, have we? The MediaWiki Stakeholders Group is a joint group um, that was created from a number of members of the um, MediaWiki third party community, um, as well as folks who are at the foundation. Um, and since there has been transition of some of us original members of the stakeholder group from the third party community to the foundation, increasingly there are channels of communication from the stakeholders group to the foundation. Yes, the MediaWiki stakeholders group is a group that meets online monthly. There is a page on MediaWiki.org. There is a um, fabricator. There's a website, mwstake.org. Um, Chris Corner, are you a what? I'm going to talk about it. Oh, Chris Corner is going to talk about it in the very next presentation. So I can stop talking about it because I'm probably running out of time, right? Yeah. So um, yes, it's a great group and it is a great channel of communication. Um, if you guys are not currently tied into the MediaWiki stakeholders group, um, please, we welcome your participation. And um, and I'd love to see even more people every month at our online um, uh, meetings. But um, Mark Hirschberger is our fearless leader. Uh, and Cindy is too. I just happen to run the calendar. <laughs> Not very good. <laughs> um, yeah, and sometimes we forget to announce things quite well enough. Please forgive us. Um, but yes, it is, it is a good channel of communication between the third party community and the foundation. So speaking of uh, third party users and the stakeholders group, uh, can you speak a little bit about um, how your work with this roadmap is tied to and restricted to the Wikipedia approach of MediaWiki use versus how other people like to implement it that doesn't necessarily parallel that use case? Um, so one of the things that, that has, was mentioned multiple times by multiple people in this audience's technology working group through the course of this work is the need to consider the third party use case and um, to make sure that we do not, um, in evolving the platform, do anything that um, 
that negates the ability of third party users to, um, to continue to use MediaWiki. So it is very much on the minds of those who are evolving the platform. But there are questions, there are constraints in the evolution of the platform where there, for, I'll give you an example, um, managed hosting. Uh, the ability of somebody to go out to a, to a host, somebody who will um, install MediaWiki, a version of MediaWiki for you, um, and maybe some extensions. Um, but you don't have command line access, for example, they're managing it for you. Um, there are limitations to the things that you can do without command line access currently. Um, how many folks here actually operate it? I'm, I'm talking, aren't I? A lot. I'm behind time already? Really? I had until, didn't I? I'm, I'm, over, I'm way over? Yeah. Okay, I'll wrap it up then. See, people seem to be enjoying it. <laughs> I'm just taking out Chris's time. Okay. Did I just blow right past 30 minutes and into close to 60? Uh, yes. Wow. Because I, I, I looked at the clock a few minutes ago and I'm like, hey, I've only been talking for 20 minutes. It feels like way longer than that. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, maybe I can add a lightning talk, you know, go into this a little bit more. But before, I was just going to get people to raise their hands. How many folks here work in that managed hosting environment where some other organization is responsible for um, their MediaWiki installation and they have no access? So you, okay, one. Okay, I'd be interested to, what, pardon me? Okay, so, so yeah, that's, I, and I'd be interested to talk to both of you more later. But that's one use case that's very often comes up is, well, we can't do anything that'll break managed hosting. And um, very seldom do I come across somebody who, who is in that use case. So I want to get more feedback from that and figure out what the real constraints are there to make sure that we aren't unnecessarily constraining ourselves, but we continue to support um, that use case as we can. Maybe there are alternative solutions that we can come up with that would support you just as well. Or maybe we need to continue on having that as a constraint. So yeah, at any rate, feedback from y'all on, on how to, what really are and are not constraints on our system. And there are some other programs that we are also, so the big CDP, the big platform evolution thing is the big thing that we're planning for the next three to five years starting next year. There are other programs as well that we are um, working as a MediaWiki platform team have an all involvement in next year. And those are some of them. I can talk about them later if anybody has questions. I think that's it. I'm done. <laughs> Chris? <You've got> five <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Chris. Cindy. So, so how long do we have before we have to leave for dinner, or that we were planning to break? Okay. So, I think Peter has a question behind you. Oh, I have the microphone. Yeah, he has the microphone. So, I'm sorry, he trumps you. Okay. Um, so, if you would have to answer Cindy in 2016 asking how can I guarantee my customers that this wonderful platform is still alive uh, in a couple of years? What would your answer be? And what would you do to convince her? 
so I'm having a conversation with myself two years ago. Is that what I'm doing? Okay. Um, I would convince her that the Wikimedia Foundation, as a steward of the MediaWiki code base, in collaboration with um, the volunteer developers, cares very much about third-party use cases. Um, obviously, Wikipedia is customer number one, and we not want to make sure that Wikipedia continues to be supported. But there are those in the foundation who care very deeply about MediaWiki as it is used by third-party developers, and um, will continue to make sure that third-party users are supported, and that nothing will happen within the platform that would make it impossible for them to continue to use it. So I would try and convince myself that I can sleep well at night, that there are those who will continue to make their interests heard. Mark? As the program chair, I just want to say that we can go eat whenever we want, and we, if, if that's later, then we can eat later, as long as no one's stomach starts growling too loud. If I hear a stomach growling, then I'll cut Chris off. Cool. And I think that's a good, I think you should go today. Yeah, I think it's a good segue into your talk, so. Cool. Thank you all. <laughs>